creepy. Uh oh. <laughs> so if you're staying, please press the yes button <laughs> to the uh, lovely female voice. Uh, I think some of you know where you are because we were here earlier. This is the Kind Mind Academy room uh, and the Facebook Kind Mind community. And um, I'm Kelly Babel, and I'm very happy to have. Uh, at last, the beautiful Rita Schuford. It, it seemed like it's longer than it needs to be because I was I was thinking it was uh, something different in my mind. And Rita, you so lovingly put it well. She said we were both running from separate realities. <laughs> it's it's yeah. great it's great to have you in the room. I um I'm gonna just turn to speaker view, and just say that um. Uh, because we ran a little bit behind, Rita and I didn't get a chance to really familiarize ourselves with um, uh, with each other. So um, I know some of you have read her bio and the things that I posted about um, uh, her background and her her education and um, the fact that she's a psychologist. And um, but even more, even better, I'd like to just share that um, the reason I had asked Rita was because. We had been uh, participating in the Hollywood Square sometime over the year, and I had seen her a couple of times, but there was this one moment when I was in a small room with uh, one of the classes that I was taking, and uh, I think, Rita, are you on the board? Do I have that right? On the board of 3PGC? No, no, no I'm not. I'm a, a uh, practitioner with it, yeah. but no. A long-term connected member. <laughs> a a long-term <laughs> lifetimes, as far as I can tell. <laughs> exactly. And there was there was just a moment that um, uh, one of the other board members was speaking, and and I was, um, as I said, uncertain whether she was on the board. But Rita spoke up, and um, I, up to this point, I hadn't heard her speak uh, professionally or in any other room that I had been in. But at that moment, I just knew there was this beautiful gentleness about you and the way you delivered the topic to me just spoke so, it just treaded lightly on my heart. Can I say that? And I just thought, who is this? I have to write this down. And, you know, sometimes we're meant to meet who we're meant to meet for the timing. Mm -hmm. And um, you were in that time frame, and literally within less than a week, she responded and said yes, she would come to the room. So, I'm so glad to have you here. <laughs> and for me, um, the room is an open, an open wisdom book. So it's basically free for you to share. Usually we run for an hour and a half, but we can do it any way you like today. Um, and I just asked that, you know, I want to know the woman. I want to know the journey. I'm curious about your own curiosity and exploration and anything that's in your in your heart today. So I turn it over to you. Well, <laughs> you might be sorry. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> One thing you will know if you don't haven't already figured out, I I don't. I, I tend to look at life um, uh, not too seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously we have our moments and our times, right? Uh, but the understanding that we're living in a spiritual reality moment to moment uh, kind of puts things in perspective as, as I've seen that. And I think as anybody sees that deeper and deeper. Uh, a lot of our worries and stresses and making a big deal of things no longer seems to need a lot of energy on our part, you know, not that it doesn't come to mind, you know, but it's uh, less and less, right, to be able to live in, in more peace of mind, no matter what, no matter what, right, and uh so my journey has, <laughs> you know, it's been, um, it's been an unbelievable journey, really, right? Uh, I feel it was my, certainly my good fortune to have met Sid and to have heard what I was looking for, and that was the missing link. 
And I had come to that after um, a few years. I've always um, been, for whatever, again, the reason, I could always see the good in people, the potential in people. And uh, and it just, um, so I was always curious, really, to understand how to draw that out when I didn't see it operating in, in a person's life. And uh, so I, I did come, um, you know, wisdom, that spiritual intelligence in us knocked on my door <laughs> after me studying many approaches because I had the opportunity to uh, in running a program. It was a juvenile delinquency prevention program in Oregon, Eugene, Oregon. And uh, I worked in with a juvenile detective and a ju juvenile court counselor. And I was the school member of the team. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we went into the community and schools, et cetera, et cetera, with the idea of uh, helping prevent kids from getting you know, in trouble and families from breaking up if possible. Right. And, uh, and all the things I was learning about and seeing <clears throat> that I would uh, use to the degree that it made common sense to me. Um, after a while, it, I could see it didn't have the sustaining quality to it for myself as well as others. It, if it didn't help me, <laughs> you know, feel better, have a better life, um, then something, again, intuitively that wisdom in me would say, hmm, Okay, next, <laughs> until eventually that intuition or that wisdom, uh, which is in us all, it's our, the essence of our soul, it's who we are, what we are, uh, basically said, there's a missing link here, you know, and it, and it really kind of came to me like that. There's something we're not seeing in the field of psychology. And uh, I just knew there was such a thing. It just, I don't know how I knew that. Again, it's that knowing you can't explain. And I knew I would recognize it when I found it without any idea of how that would happen. I just knew that everything I had, and I studied many approaches, they were always more in the more human potential realm because I could see that in people, right? So I was more drawn to that versus Freud, which didn't make sense to me that people couldn't evolve in their life, you know, beyond a certain, uh, whatever their traumas had uh, uh, damaged them. That was the belief, right? And it just didn't make sense to me, again. So when I had the good fortune of actually hearing, you know, the missing link tape that that Sid, you know, had taped uh, many years ago. That was in 1977, 78, right? Uh, I knew within the first five minutes that I had found what I was looking for. And uh, I didn't really, I couldn't put it in words. I just knew it to be true. And that uh, it, the things I remembered at that from that time was that Sid was very clear that the past does not exist. Well, psychological theories are based <laughs> on our past a lot, aren't they? <laughs> and coping and coping and coping. And uh, so I, I knew I had found what I was looking for. And, uh, and then it was from that point on, you know, I have not veered from that. I, I've listened to Sid, he's been my teacher, he's been my mentor, he's been my friend. And uh, I can, and it's, it's not, well, it is him in the sense that he was a, a wonderful, Mark knows Mark was around. <laughs> uh, 
be funny, caring, loving, uh, and of course, I would say enlightened. Had the had the it was his destiny, and and what he brought into the world, and thus into the field of psychology and psychiatry, was the understanding, without a shadow of a doubt, that we are innately healthy, at the core. And that in any moment, we could reawaken to that if we'd lost sight of that, which we all do, because we all learn to think in ways that are uh, antithetical to the truth. Meaning, we learn to believe that there are conditions in our life, there are people in our life, there are circumstances in our life, whether past, present, or possible future, right? that has power to determine our experience in the moment. And uh, he took that off the table. He said, we're always in the now. We're always in the now. And the now is beyond time, space, and matter. It's that spiritual intelligence out of which all things are being created through mind, thought, and consciousness. That's the the bridge, you might say. And uh, to know that, you know, to the degree that I, that I can see it, and it's, you know, as you will hear many people say, the little bit, <laughs> you know, uh, is life-changing. It's life-changing. You know, it's, it frees, it has freed me from old insecurities and habits. And, uh, and it has uh, opened my life in ways that I never could have dreamed of. You know, here I am, I live in Hawaii. <laughs> Go figure, right? <laughs> A little old Oregon girl. <laughs> I'm originally from Portland lived in Eugene for many years. And that's, that's where I uh, first heard Sid. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm not sure what all, I mean, there's stories and stories and stories, but one of the, you know, one of the, you used the term a couple of times of gentle, right? And that, we talked about that a lot early on is how gentle, this is this understanding, awakening, and unfolding in us is okay, and uh, and how how that gentle gentleness is so powerful, so very very powerful, because without any effort on our part, we are getting free of the idea that there's an outside power, something outside, you could say outside God or outside mind, thought and consciousness that has a power, some power to determine our experience, how we feel, how things look to us, how we react, you know, what's possible, what's not possible. And uh, what the principles or this understanding wakes us up to is there we're living in an illusion a spiritual illusion of mind thought and consciousness okay? and there is nothing beyond that there's no there is no outside in in the sense that there's some reality existing that at any moment could act on us to determine our experience. There are things that are going to act on us. <laughs> we know that, right? <laughs> so this is common sense. This is not airy-fairy. This is very down-to-earth common sense. But it's common sense that is coming from a deeper wisdom of, and growing insight on our part as we keep listening that, that we're moment to moment living from within our own mind and being 
through mind, thought, and consciousness. It's always inside out, and we're always going to, in any moment, because that's all we have is moment to moment. <laughs> I, you know, I always love the, the truth that every moment is a second chance. And that means in total, in total, that we could see something in a way that we haven't seen before from a healthier perspective of truth. So we're built for new thought. We're built to wake up. Our mind, and this is part of that gentleness, I think, is built to let go of what it realizes is not true. And the belief that, let's say, my neighbor could make me angry without me having anything to do with that. <laughs> you know, it's just happening to me. You know, that asshole, whatever I'm thinking. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't work that way. Thank God. I mean, thank God. I mean, our, our experience this morning, Kelly, it's a perfect example. I had to sit, I was laughing, I'm having my coffee. I seldom am up before 7 a.m. my time. So when I saw that you, you had contacted me, I went five something, I thought, no way, girl. <laughs> What was she thinking? <laughs> what was she thinking? I mean, I mean, it's so funny that we totally were like in separate realities about timing, right? Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yes. And uh, and so uh, yeah, it, it's it was to be able to go, huh, 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 and then go, oh, oh well, and then have the opportunity to talk anyway. <laughs> But that, you know, being free of, of getting caught in a, uh, you know, um, a thought feeling experience about our disconnect. The disconnect happened. <laughs> My feeling changed from moment to moment. <laughs> Well, I had said to the group that, you know, I there was a conversation at one time that I, it, recently that was on fixing, that we're not here to fix. And I said, so I'm just not fixing this. <laughs> we're just going to go with, you know, what Rita had going on and we'll see you back all at 12 o'clock. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. uh, you know, it's and it was uh, one of those places where the gentleness of the experience everybody here witnessed the fact that we were just going to take that 10 15 minutes to come together say hello mm -hmm. and it was beautiful and then we yeah. all were going to come back so yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so how did you get involved in this kelly the the experience was um dropped on my lap, if you will. Uh, I was pointed in the direction about five years ago. And um, the uh, a friend of mine had been listening to some podcasts. And they said that this is really cool. Do you want to listen to this? And we were leaving a experiential volunteer position that we had done for a week, working like 12, 13 hours a day. And we plugged this in as we sailed into the sunset of Joshua Tree and listened mm. to the three Ps. And it happened to be Michael Neal at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it just got richer and richer until finally, um, you know, how could we possibly be sitting on the original grounds in Vancouver and not go over to the little school at Salt Spring? And so uh, that was where the personal journey began. And, um, and the, the direction it's been pointing me just has continuing to open. I'm, I'm very much for community and sharing. And so the, uh, the insight of doing these calls came sometime in September last year. Uh, after having taught the principles for one year, I said, how could I possibly reach past the community that I'm in? 
Mm -hmm. you know, short of saying to everybody that was, you know, in my classes, can you please tell a friend and share with your friends and share with, you, you know, they, I said, how can I do that? And I just, Elsie came to mind. And mm -hmm. so I called Elsie and I said, um, Elsie, would you be willing to come out of retirement for me? <laughs> and uh, she said, yes. Uh -huh. And so we began the series in January and it's been every week since then. Mm -hmm. And so what's the beautiful thing about that is the trail is like a red thread that just keeps weaving itself to the next person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, how did you make it all the way over there to Hawaii <laughs> from good old <laughs> Portland or Eugene, even, even better, Eugene? Well, actually, I went from Eugene to uh, Florida. There was only one site, and I was working on my doctorate by that time, okay? Having, you know, anyway, <laughs> it was like a last-minute decision <laughs> to go ahead and apply for the doctoral program. Because uh, I was, I, at that point, I was in this kind of reflective place of looking for the missing link. And that was my main goal, even when they asked what I would want to do as in my doctorate study, I said, I want to uh, find the common denominators in psychology. And, you know, my professor, they were all friends by that time. Eugene is a small town. <laughs> and I worked with them and their kids and whatever. And, uh, and you know, um, they just said, well, you know, the field of psychology has been trying to find common denominators don't you know forget that it's not happening Rita <laughs> and I'm very stubborn <laughs> and and but I knew you know deep down there was something there had to be there had to be I could see it in people I could see it and I could connect with it at times right so I knew there was something and uh so anyhow you know I said Oh, well, and, uh, and and it was really Roger Mills, Dr. Roger Mills, who was very, again, early on, a colleague. I worked, We worked together in Eugene, and we knew each other. We were good friends, and, and he's the one that told me about Sid and, and some tapes he'd used in classes. And so it, it really, that he told me, but as he was leaving town, we were having lunch, and he told me about it, and I didn't you know, mean anything to me at the time. But again, this is how life works or how wisdom works, I guess, is that I had to get accepted into the doctoral program, which was nine months after Roger left town to go to Salt Spring. And it was after I'd actually been accepted into the program that I, and I'd been sitting in my apartment because I, again, just in, again, I would say, listen to yourself, listen to your own intuition or gut or what feels right. There's, there's wisdom in that, right? And uh, I, you know, I, I knew it wasn't a technique I was looking for. I was never really into techniques. I think that was part of it too. And it wasn't a practice. I didn't have anything against meditation or yoga or anything like that. But it, I just, you know, again, that intuition kept saying, no, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. So I would sit, just sit in my apartment. <laughs> kind of, I, you know, and, uh, and after getting accepted into the program, the doctoral program, a couple of weeks after that, I, again, out of the blue, we often say out of the blue is how wisdom comes to us or insight or realization or clarity or whatever it might be is getting past the ego mind to give us something new, right? Uh, that I remembered Roger had mentioned tapes. I thought, oh, let me see if they still have them at the bookstore 
And they did, a couple of them. And one was the missing link. So, but, you know, intellectually, we're, you know, we're on this, in this physical plane of what we've already thought, no, whatever. So even when I, they said they had one called the missing link, I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I, I really didn't have an expectation that this was going to be the moment for me. You know, you don't know. You don't know. But it was, you know, I put it on and boom, five minutes in, I knew I had found what I was looking for. And, uh, and so it's been 40 some years and uh, it's the beauty of truth is to me is that there's no end, you know, there's just no end to seeing more deeply the spiritual nature of our experience in life and to get free of the thinking that's saying it's not spiritual. And I mean, I don't mean religious when I say that, but that life is some material thing that exists separate from us. And uh, we're talking about it's being created through us, through the channel of our mind, moment to moment. And uh, it just kind of keeps getting more simple, more simple, more simple. And what that looks like in life is showing up in the moment, seeing what happens. Having being in a consciousness that uh, is guided by wisdom in a more pure way, you might say. And so, the uh, again, the, just those uh, those beliefs and all of it innocent. The, the the way that we think and act and behave is so innocent psychologically innocent it just seems like it's the only way we could feel or act or react at times and uh and the principles bring us back to in the next moment we could see it different feel different have a different response and uh and that is, is our birthright to keep coming back to who and what we really are and getting free in that as our mind wakes up more, it's like our mind is more open to now and, and seeing how life is unfolding and uh, and recognizing when we're, you might say, using thought in a way uh, that's not true. And we're just, when it, when I blame some circumstance or condition, which I do, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think sometimes when, when people begin to uh, have insight into the principles and are drawn to understanding it that, and I know this certainly happened for me, you know, that it looks like there's a way we're supposed to be or live the right way, <laughs> the loving way, the caring way, <laughs> which is true. We will more and more, right? But there's no right or wrong. There's, there's innocence misusing thought because we've learned to, we've learned to, right? And, uh, but we get free of it without effort as we more and more see that we're living in a world of spiritual power, spiritual essence. Thought and consciousness are bringing that to life in us. And it is moment to moment. It's moment to moment. So Kelly and I could have our conundrum 
total confusion. I'm like, oh my God, we've been talking about this and we had no idea we were talking about totally different things. <laughs> and I, I'm really technically challenged anyway. And uh, so I just usually chalk it up to that. <laughs> but to be able to go from a little, ooh, to, there it goes again, separate realities. <laughs> no one's uh, intention. I think that's the beautiful thing about the principles is once we see, you know, once I got to the place of seeing, oh, oh, she, she's not coming for this time, <laughs> you know, that moment where you, it, it's in yeah. you now, you've, you've been, and how quickly that becomes a no thing. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's like, okay and, and it was it was like there was no plan b because <laughs> usually i don't need one but how quickly yeah. the the wisdom turns into this is a no thing mm -hmm. we're gonna have a chat whenever that chat's gonna be and mm -hmm. these beautiful people uh you know are gonna be there or not and and it's mm -hmm. st it's it wasn't a thing to me like like that yeah yeah, and it's and it's it's so it becomes so much a part of your way of life, doesn't it? Yeah. That some you know I think uh, you don't want to take it for granted, but there are times you take it for granted. Yeah. But then the moment arrives again to be grateful mm -hmm. for how life works from the inside out, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and how free we really are and how um, uh, perfect our journey is for each of us. Yeah. You had made, I, I post up some resources that I, I find um, of the speaker prior to the calls and you had um, had a call with, it was called Think Tech, uh, if I have that right. Um, shrink wrapping, <laughs> shrink. It was something about shrink wrapping or something like that. It caught my ear. It was kind of a twist on words, but it was an interview that you did with a TV show in Hawaii, and I oh I, yeah, I listened to it twice because the power of what you were saying was enlightening one who hadn't heard before, and that really intrigued me. And you had mentioned. Um, thinking has no power and then you had said yet to have thought the power of thought is there the power of thought and when we see like this morning we were caught up when I saw that I was caught up for that moment you know I love this you said that still needs an answer so I might be caught up I might but I'm there's still an answer I'm looking for in that moment mm -hmm. Right. There's still. Yeah. A, so what am I going to do? <laughs> What's going to be, you know, and wisdom in that stiller mind just allowed me to calm down and, you know, a, a, literally arose plan B, plan B. <laughs> you know, this. <laughs> what, so what are you going to do now? Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think, well, yeah. here were all these beautiful people. But that was the power of thought within me uh -huh. being yeah. used in a in a you know, a beautiful way. Yeah. yeah. You spoke about that. And, and I'm, you know, speaking to a clear mind and the common sense of a free mind. I'm wondering if you could share a little bit about that, that, that there's, because the word sensing is coming, a lot, coming up a lot in the rooms. I'm not sure if that, if that's not me, maybe you read is someone calling. Oh, hang on a second. oh. no, it's me. Just no. like, sorry about that. No. These are, this is just the most unbelievable call. We, we are, uh, every, I, I'm not sure I should put the gallery on here, but uh, we're all experiencing life. Isn't that wonderful? Like technology, both of us here are like, you know, that's not our strongest suit. We're working it. But I don't think I've ever had someone call me in the middle of a call. That's a whole nother situation, hasn't it? <laughs> 
Well, well, here's my power of thought. What I'm thinking is my common sense says turn the phone off. <laughs> but but I'm just curious. Maybe you could speak a little bit more on that the the common sense or the sensing of things because I really took from that that the innate sense always knows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if you could share a bit on that for us. Well, um, common sense, well, one way I would say it is common sense is wisdom in the moment. So it's sometimes it's very practical. That's what you, you said, turn my phone off. That's a very practical thing to do if you don't want to be bothered by it, right? And so it, it's, that's what I mean. This is not airy fairy and yet it's very magical i mean there's the words the truth there's a paradox in it yeah and it can only be seen from within ourselves right so common sense like like for instance you know um i know a couple people mark i know knows that my husband died suddenly you know three years three about three and a half years ago and uh that uh, changed the course of my life in many ways because we'd been together for 40 years. And, and uh, so there's a whole world of thought related to that, right? And, uh, but I was, I was very grateful uh, to know that I was okay no matter what. I knew that. We knew that. We'd actually talked two weeks before that, like, what would we do if one of us died before the other one? I mean, it was it's so, when you look back, sometimes you just see how things were, you were being prepared for something, not knowing it was coming, right? So, you know, when this happened, fortunately, it was five minutes from home, five minutes from the hospital. It, it was perfectly orchestrated if it was going to have to happen. And it happened exactly the way my husband wanted it to happen, which is kind of a beautiful thing, you know? And yet, you know, it threw me into a world between two worlds, you might say. What was, what is yet to unfold. And, uh, and the common sense was that I didn't know what was going to happen next or what was, would be best for me next or, you know, uh, people have a lot of theories and ideas about grief and loss. And um, I, again, out of my own kind of stubbornness maybe, or just intuition, I, I kind of take theories lightly. You know, I, I don't, it's, it's someone's idea about something and that and it's the best the person comes up with. But what I knew, again, my common sense was that from moment to moment, I had no idea how I would feel. Right? And I was okay with that. I was okay with that. Right. And, and I was sharing uh, this, I don't remember with who but you know just when I uh, after all the you know we did a celebration all of it happened pretty quickly right people came from all over all over all over you know. and uh, it was beautiful and when everybody left and I was just alone uh, one day I was laying on my bed right? and I was all curled up and I was you know, feeling really bad and sad. And again, you know, not right or wrong. It was that's fine. We're going to feel that way at times, right? But then I was kind of like, well, maybe I'll never leave this bed. And, you know, I was kind of getting into it, right? And, and then it occurred to me that 
I was feeling sorry for myself. Now, people would say, well, yeah, okay, right? But that's not, I don't know, just, it, it actually kind of um, woke me up a little bit, right? And so I laid there a few more minutes. And then I would say my common sense, right, said, wait, maybe, you know, it's that resilience in us, right? Uh, why don't you go to Whole Foods and have a cup of tea? <laughs> Get out of the house, right? Now, I went to Whole Foods. You know, I couldn't help but it. it's like common sense is simple, but it, it gives you what you need at the time. It, but it's, it's laced in wisdom, what's best, best for us, given whatever, right? So I go to Whole Foods, right, where my husband and I hung out a lot. You know, we love to pe people watch, right? So I, I'm walking through Whole Foods, and from time to time, tears streaming. But it was okay. I didn't care, right? So it's like knowing uh, that not knowing is a, a beautiful place to rest. It's, to me, common sense. Okay, and I have rested in a lot of not knowing over the last three and a half years, right? And when I try to figure out something before it's time, for whatever the reason, right? My I get the feedback of feeling stressed or pressured, or it's it's not coming. The clarity isn't coming. Well, then. My common sense says, Rita, step up. You know, um, there's just something you don't see right now. And that's okay because the unknown is spiritual. There's nothing to fear. That's a made up human idea that not knowing has some fearful value to it. And, uh, and it can't, it's, it's neutral in a sense, right? It's just has not yet unfolded for us, right? And it, I, it's, I think it's so important to remember, it's always coming from within us, whatever we see, feel, make of things. And, you know, Sid really stressed feeling as a guide and to me it's always been my guide so when, when the feeling isn't you know at ease in some way in me right uh, I might get caught in my thinking <laughs> because that's where it's coming from it's the way the way I am thinking right about whatever the detail is right that uh it occurs to me. Oh, I get curious. Okay. Now, curiosity to me is what common sense says. Oh, you don't get it here. Okay. Take a moment, step back, get, be open, right? And, uh, and see what occurs. And, and it, it comes in the form of thought, but it comes that the thought will have a feeling to it, a quality of feeling to it, okay? And when it's wisdom and common sense, there's a certain um, matter-of-factness out of it, a certain, um, oh, yep, yep, oh, yeah, things start to fall in place, right? And when the common sense is you simply don't know right now, it allows my mind to let it go, meaning letting go of the thinking that's trying to figure out something it can't figure out right now. I'm hearing you in that, in, a, in my own personal ears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
let alone mm-hmm. just my principal's ear, principal ears, um, the quality of the thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think for many, not not only myself, but for many that um, I share the principles with who are new or newer, um, really underestimate the experience of curiosity in the unknown. Mm-hmm. That the, that, like you said, the answer is going to be answered, and it will come. It will. Mm-hmm. Come. Yet we, you know. We think at times, I've seen people share at times where it's just they're questioning the answer or maybe they don't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know better. No, God, I know better. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking what, what to say about um, the place where... Um, Oh, I just lost my train of thought there about it was about yeah that place where um waiting it out you know there's 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 a time frame of impatience around but I should have the answer now <laughs> what do you what say you on that Rita <laughs> good luck I say <laughs> well aren't these answers on demand like <laughs> Well, again, here's to me the common sense. If I need to have uh, some clarity, I'll get something. Mm-hmm. Right? Something's going to come to me. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I'm stressing about whatever it is, right? That way of thinking, you might say, is in. It's like uh, static in the system. It, it's interfering. Yeah. Right? When I realize more insightfully that I simply don't know, but uh, I'm really hopeful. Here's an example from yesterday, I guess it was, or the day before, whenever. Right? I'm finishing edits on a, on a chapter in a book right now, right? And, uh, and one answer I have not been able to write up yet. And uh, and it's really to, in my own way, talk about what the principles are. Now, I've done that many times. I've written, I've, <laughs> but something in me has stopped me from just writing what I would say normally write, right? And so I've had to sit with that because every time I've tried to do it, it's it's not flowing right and so uh my little ego mind's going yike yike (laughs) this is already past due yike yike (laughs) but what i realized one of the things i realized was uh what i was needing was deeper quiet in me in my life and so I really uh, have just spent a lot of time in quiet no tv no reading I I love my programs I you know I I, whatever Uh, but it was what for me right and so then I went for a walk a couple of days ago and I was like or yesterday I I lose track but um, I I always listen to my iTunes, which I have uh, old tapes by Sid, some personal, some from his programs on my iTunes. And I just let it, you know, run. I don't, I turn on my earbuds and whatever comes up is whatever comes up, right? And uh, so I'm walking with my dog and, and, I, and I thought, I'd really like to hear something about you know, hear about the three principles, okay? So I hit my little iTunes, my earbuds, and and Sid's talking. Now, I have no idea what's going to come up next on my iTunes, right? I know what I'm hopeful of, right? And, uh, but I don't have any, 
attachment, as they say, one way or another. I'm just kind of, okay. So I'm, I'm listening and I'm going, and he's straight on talking about the three principles. And, you know, sometimes it's different than that. I mean, he's always talking about them, but in different ways. And, and, um, and so I think I take out my phone and go, Here, here's what's on my phone. The three principles from the Washington lectures. And all I could do was say, thank you. Thank you. And I'd listen to it over and over since then. Over and over. So I'm not sure now I've lost track of what your question was, but it's to me, it's like we are, you know, moment to moment, they're uh, I can't explain why I turned on my earbuds and what was there was exactly what I was hoping for, mm -hmm. but I can be grateful for it. Mm -hmm. I can be grateful for it. I used to take more credit, like, oh, I'm special because, oh, look, at this happened to me. Trust me, if any of you are even tempted, <laughs> ego is a very... Uh, Personal thought, personal mind is can be very tricky. <laughs> yeah. I I definitely hear what you're saying about this selective choicing where you just ran. I do that often, and it's it's yeah. a beautiful thing because wherever you are, something speaks to you in that moment, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So I wonder, Rita, if anybody, um, if we should open up the room and just see if anybody would like to talk. Yeah, yeah, I would love that. Actually. Yeah. I would love that. Mm -hmm. So I know there's a few familiar faces. I'm just going to switch to gallery. I know I know people have familiar faces in the room. And, um, oops, there's still more people coming back in. <laughs> so does anybody have a question or something like that to share with Rita around anything that's uh, coming to mind, the principles and... Rita's journey, something that you've experienced with Rita or heard. Hey, Kelly. Hi, go ahead, Rick. Hey, yeah, I'd like to put my video on, but anyway, yeah, good to see you again, Rita. Uh, awesome yeah, to hear from you. yeah, nice um, to see your. Uh, I just see a virtual face in the middle of my screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know it's it's smiling anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's a, it's a good picture, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I I I love how you uh, uh, said. Uh, um, it, I guess it's all along the sense of uh, not taking yourself too seriously, but thinking that you're special. Uh, you know, in, in some ways, I you know, like being tapped on the shoulders to sort of you know, kind of to me, you know, doing something doesn't. As soon as I get my ego in there, saying, "Oh, I'm special," to 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 be honored to kind of do this, it kind of it's kind of really falls flat on it on my face anyways. Um, but I'm curious if what you, what's your take on the, the idea of participating in your life in relationship to what Sid was kind of saying, go live your life. I'm not quite sure what your question is. Okay. Like, like I've been toying playing with the idea uh, between there's interfering with your life and there's participating in your life. In other words, like that piece of getting in your way kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I find that when I, when, when I have that feeling that things aren't working according to Doyle, the, the notion is, okay, so where am I not participating? Where am I not showing up um, fully, you know, um, in other words, I guess, in other ways, would be like, where am I, what am I not letting go of? Um, or, or getting out of, you know, allowing to get out of the way so I can actually, you know, participate and experience life fully rather than dragging a bunch of baggage with me into, into whatever I'm doing. 
Does that make more sense? <laughs> Is there clarity there? Uh, let me let me take a shot at it and see. I, I'm still a little. Uh, it's it sounds like that you're trying to figure out something analytically. Well, I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, I know. Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, let me just go to, and then we'll hopefully this will. It, it's like. If you go to the missing link, you'll see Sid talks about that we are observers and participants in this life journey, right? In creation. And uh, and it, it's like the journey of the soul. And so um, when when he said early on, just live your life that struck a chord with me and with my husband right and we just went you know did that you might say that we we have had a very uh, beautiful quiet life in many ways and uh but it was all about the living of it you know to to enjoy life right to, um, for me, it's always been about being in service to the truth, you know, help being there to help people. Okay. And when, um, uh, when I, um, in any moment, the more I'm in that moment with whatever is happening, I'm participating as a part of me sees what's happening okay and um, when I start to uh, wonder what's getting in the way of me participating in some way that I think I should be or could be uh, I I take that as a um, ego. And I, I say that because uh, there's something I'm just not seeing. And, and so I, this is not coming out very clearly, I can tell. Um, we're always in life. We're always in life. We cannot uh, not be in life and be in the truth that's giving us life. And that wisdom or truth is, uh, is there to guide us. When we are out of tune with what's true for us and we're trying to accomplish something that we think we should be doing, because we have the skills for it or whatever the reasoning might be. But there's, it's, it's not feeling right or it's not going anywhere. That, that feeling of struggle and uncertainty and uh, things not falling in place uh, is my wake up call, meaning step back inside and I'm now uh, open to see what I need to see which is going to come with a feeling of more certainty and clarity and uh, and my mind will of its own accord let go of what not doesn't need to be on it Was that helpful, Rick? Yeah, it it, it, it is. I mean, it, I, um, language is so limiting sometimes. Uh, the, you know, I see that, um, um, you know, 
it's, it's, all, it's so paradoxical in the sense that, you know, we want to live our life and, and we are, if, you know, if, if, if the truth is that we're spiritual beings having a human experience and our whole sort of essence, like it says, you know, is, is to really experience that. There's a lot of other stuff that I put in the way of that and, or the ego or whatever. And noticing that from a feeling but without a, you know, when I get in the way of not fully experiencing what is happening, regardless of what it, how it's showing up, sort of fighting back towards, well, I got to get more spiritual about this. And I end up re removing myself more of that rather than going forward and letting go of that notion, just allowing that whatever it is to express through me, you know, whether it's grief or sadness or happiness, or whatever, just allow that expression to come through. I, it feels more spiritual, it feels more in contentment because I'm, I'm riding the flow of the stream rather than trying to fight anything. Mm -hmm. So I, I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so simple. You know, it's so simple that um, when I start struggling, I know I've lost that simplicity. I've gotten mm -hmm. caught up in my thinking in a way that's uh, not helpful. And, uh, and that's going to happen, right? But it is passing thought and... Uh, it will pass. And it's, it's, for me, there's a feeling of uh, ease or relaxation within that I know is, puts me back in tune. I'm more in tune with the spiritual nature of who and what I am and what life is. And uh, I may, out of that, get clarity that what I was considering moving forward on is exactly what I should do, right? With some next steps yeah. included, right? Yeah. Or it, it might be for whatever reason, the timing's not right. There's something I have yet to see, which might be of a deeper nature of insight, right? But it's relaxing with it instead of trying now to do something. There's nothing to do, you know. Uh, I always love when I, when Sid or anybody would say, just be, right? Just be. And the um, participating in life is just being at that point. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. So I, yeah. Wonderful. I mean, I hope, hopefully we got to where we need it because it's like we, again, intellectually, we have ideas of what it means to participate in life, right? <laughs> I remember early on, clients would say things like, well, I need to be productive. I need to be productive, right? I'm not productive enough, right? And I'd say, well, how do you define productive? Oh, you mean there's another way to look at it besides doing, <laughs> accomplishing? Again, nothing wrong with any of that. But it's productive, what, I, what we would come to typically, to be sometimes the most productive thing we can do, which is what I've kind of been up to the last, you know, few days or whatever is to just be just be go within and going within is not the body you know that uh, it's within the purity of our the consciousness of who and what we are and uh miraculously out of that emerges is kind of out of the mist emerges 
what we need for now, for now. Thank you. Nice to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I'm, I'm building a deck. So I'm kind of a yeah, no, no kind of, worries. <laughs> okay, right. we don't want any sweaty bodies on here. No, maybe we do. <laughs> <laughs> Behave. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. I was sitting here thinking, I have now the gardeners coming through with the fans, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm hoping that Rick and and Rita just talk long enough until the blower's gone. <laughs> I, well. uh, I I just uh, I I giggle, but. I, I heard a lot in that too, as well around participation and and um, the the thinking mind. Like I, I think sometimes that question comes up when there's um, like for myself. I think I, I'm still working. I'm still this. You know, I, I'm still looking to create a living for myself as, af, after five years of changing from one living to this living. And so people are in the yeah, but I got to make some money. I got to make so you know, success is monetary financial gain, you know, and I, th I, I think that it's that place too, where the, the, the ego is saying that there has to be this amount of money around it, or it has to look like this. And, you know, pointing myself in the direction of seeing that it'll all come when it needs to come. Mm -hmm. No more thinking on it or analyzing it or dissecting it because oftentimes I, i'm finding myself pushing to make or create something and i already know it doesn't feel you know it's just not authentic to me it's like oh but yeah. the, the financial need uh, um in the thinking mind against the place of organic delivery wisdom mm -hmm. creation you know creating and and there's there's that you know what am I playing with? You know, because I, I think some people are still in that way, especially in the coaching industry, mentoring. You come from the psychology world is such a big part of the principles. Um, yet there's so many new coaches that are coming in that are looking to build what they can, would consider a business for themselves. And so when they hear them, just be for me, <laughs> they, they're like, well, what is that supposed to mean? Just be, and so uh, you know, they they may not have even executed to the to the place where they're delivering yet. They're just you know thinking about what they're going to create. So I I uh, respect what Rick is saying in the. I mean, am I not supposed to be the participant in my world? <laughs> yeah, you are. You are obviously. It's the place we're coming from. That's the difference. Yeah. Right. Within ourselves, the state of our mind or consciousness. And I, would you, what would you say to the understanding of the urgency? Like before I met the principles, and even while, you know, my, my fallout it was, I, you know, come on, let's make this happen. <laughs> let's, let's, and I realized mm -hmm. there is no pushing the universal creation. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and you know, I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, because I mentored a number of coaches, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and one of the, you know, and, and people who, who get attracted to the principles in, along the lines of becoming a coach, okay? Uh, it's um, the idea of becoming a coach becomes bigger than following our own sense of what's right for us. Yeah. And, and that's what I heard with a few of them, you know, that they, they couldn't get the coaching business going. There is something happening, but in their normal life, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Their job is, is actually getting better. <laughs> the job that they have already right? yes. <laughs> you know they're enjoying it more they're being considered you know to do different things but this idea that they're supposed to be a coach now and make a living from that maybe that's what will happen I, I don't know but I also know the idea of coach 
is just an idea. Yeah. It's it's not the source of our happiness. It's not uh, everything in this world of form is spiritually created through thought. Okay. And and when we put a a uh, I don't know a fence around the form and say, okay, that's the only form that will make me happy. <laughs> hmm. We've uh, we've missed a deeper truth in that, right? And so now we're struggling to make something happen when it was never meant to happen for us. Mm -hmm. let's say right because we have a, a deeper purpose or we have another avenue because you know i walk around and have the most beautiful interactions with people mm -hmm. i'm walking my dog yesterday in the evening and i run into some people that i haven't seen in years you know i've seen them in counseling at one time and they're on their bikes. And I'm like, oh, hi, I haven't seen you in a long time. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing great. Da, 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 da. And then we get into a conversation. And then all of a sudden, we're talking deep shit. Yeah. Simple, simple stuff, but yeah. deep, right? And they're like, oh, it's so wonderful. You know, oh, and they, they ride off on their bicycle. And I think we had a moment of soul to soul looking into truth together just this and the simplicity of it like i don't know if the husband said it or i said it or what we're talking about it's all attitude there that you know somehow the word attitude it's all about attitude because he's had two or three rounds of cancer and is still battling some of it right and uh and he says yeah but it he said one minute doesn't even seem like i have cancer i don't think about it he says i don't think about it he said, I do what I'm supposed to do, but I don't think about it. Yeah. Now that's common sense. Yes. And wisdom. Yes. From his own understanding that he's going to live in, in the feelings of his own creation. Yeah. Yeah. I think when, when Sid was asked about <clears throat> um, his, in his finals days, Chip mentioned that he said, you know, how, how are you, how are you doing with all this, Sid? And Sid said, well, I got to tell you, it's bloody frustrating. <laughs> you know? He says, I, I just like to be, you know, doing what I need to do. <laughs> yeah. So I, wow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's what I mean. It's, 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 it's just, it's all of us. Yeah. Right. And, and Sid was, authentic in that way yeah. totally and, and it didn't matter to him you know I call I happened to call him and, and it turned out it was a few days before he died right and I hadn't talked to him in a while I, and I I didn't really expect him to pick up the phone because I knew he was pretty bedridden at the time and uh, but he did he picks up the phone <laughs> really kind of took me off guard for a moment right and uh and i said oh hi i said you know how are you doing and he says oh Rhea. he said i'm in so much pain i thought i said oh i said i'm so sorry so sorry that you have to go through this and uh and we just chatted for a few minutes and and then it was a little more you might say upbeat or, or whatever, but it was, there was something about his honesty in that moment that touched me as deeply as just about anything. It's humanity, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and that he was okay with it. He's okay with it. You know, he just had a visit from Israeli soldiers yes. it was the week before or whatever. And from all, you know, accounts, he came so alive during that time with those, you know, PTSD diagnosed soldiers, right? And uh, 
So it's like we rise above the physical. Mm -hmm. right? And we all have that time, times. Right? We rise above the physical. Right? And, uh, and that's, that's a feeling. They lift from within. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and there's no denial of the physical realities, you might say. It's that we, we, ex we experience the spiritual beyond the physical in that moment. Mm -hmm. I think the moment you're speaking to is one that I heard. It was Chip say it was as if he was 22 again. Yeah. Because he hadn't had a, a much of a voice at, by that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said the power of what came through him at that time, he says, it was like he was 22. He was talking with vigor and, you know, uh, yeah. vivaciousness and that that I think is the the experience of creation within us when we're in that feeling, that, mm -hmm. that way of being. Yeah. yeah. Well, this has been a rich experience for me. Yeah, I really appreciate this time with you and the game here. Yeah. And uh, I I always love sharing and yeah. having conversation yes soul to soul i do too i do too would it, either of you like to say anything before we close the room celia's on her last leg i'm sure it's probably late late hours of oh shoot <laughs> she's she came back like a trooper i think it's 11 o'clock there or something now isn't it yeah yeah what a trooper um Mark, did you want to say anything before we go? Even if it's just goodbye. <laughs> sure, I'd love to say goodbye and thank you, Rita, for sharing so beautifully. Very, very deep. You know, uh, one thing that relates, I, I thought of as you were saying about, and, and Rick, about uh, having expectations about what is next. Uh, I think Sid said something about you might as well put uh, put a label on your forehead uh, of the date and time that you took on that concept. So <laughs> <laughs> you know you might as well because you you've temporarily stopped uh, you know thinking that you've started thinking that something's important in that time that hasn't naturally come. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, Thank you so much, Rita and Kelly. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. So, yeah, thanks for coming back. <laughs> there's a, the, in the, the Kind Mind community, there'll be many people waiting. They've already tried. I think they thought you were here. So they've already tried coming to get the recording. And it's nothing not there yet. So. Oh. oh, okay. I'll be posting this amazing conversation up for those that missed the call. And uh, I just, um, I send you mana and aloha and thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with me. And I look forward to connecting with you more in the near future. Absolutely. Me too. Me too. Let's all stay in touch. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So thank you everybody. Bye for this week. And we'll see you again. Same time, same place in the kind. Mind. Aloha. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Uh huh. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Mark, and well wishes to you and your mom. Bye for now. Bye.